So, like, uh, you've done so many interviews, man. There's so many on your YouTube. Is there um, certain ones that you enjoy more than others? Yeah, it really depends. Um, when it when it comes to interviews, I really don't care if they're high profile as long as, as the people are somewhat engaged. Uh, generally, what the, the rule is, the bigger the podcast is or the bigger the group is, the higher probability the host is not going to budge at all. <laughs> okay. Meaning, and, and they can't. So, you know, when you're talking to a major network, whoever you're talking to all isn't just going to snap in and go, holy smokes, that makes sense. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm totally with you. And, uh, but, but smaller groups, and which is why I like talking to classrooms. I have talked to so many classrooms over the last, uh, uh, couple of years. It's, it's been just wild. And, you know, everything from junior high schools to universities in other countries. In fact, um, I just got a thing this morning, uh, another group out of Norway. You know, you know what it is? What changed it was the, the documentary. As much as people in our community hated it, uh, it became, uh, because it was on Netflix, it became media sanctioned. And so science teachers said, oh, yeah, you know, they, they just kill a, sh a class and, and, and say, you know, let's just watch this. And we'll show you what the other side, you know, the anti-science people sound like. And what they don't know is it's like, yeah, that's the worst thing you could ever do because you're exposing these kids to the whole flat earth concept. That most of them wouldn't be like, I have no idea what you're talking about. So it's been, yeah, it's yeah. been great. Um, how is, uh, I'll, I'll bounce back to that, like documentary. Cause I got some questions for that. Cause sure. it, I, I really enjoyed it. It was good. And that's how I got introduced to you. Um, how's yeah. the, how's the retention rate on the videos? Cause I know they're like an hour and a half long. I listened to the whole interview and yeah. I do it. Um, actually why I play like Pokemon stadium, like these vintage, uh, like N64. So I'll just like, um, yeah, I like playing like the classics and, yeah. uh, I'll throw on one of your videos and they're they're great, man. Like especially okay. with the college kids, they're they're so good. Do other people watch the whole interview? Yeah, with mine they generally do or listen to the interview, which I was why I like doing audio stuff. Uh my early interviews, almost all of them were were audio only, because that's just what you did. It wasn't until um and but I didn't change the the style at all. So, and, and that's honestly what you do is what I do as well. So like I've been getting into, um, Diablo resurrected, you know, they, they completely revamped it. And so what I'll do is I, I won't put on my own stuff generally, but I will put on somebody else's interview and just listen to it the whole way through because it's, you know, if I'm playing for an hour or 90 it's minutes, so like, yeah. easy, like background and, uh, I play better when I have you on. So I just, uh, <laughs> yeah, but, I play a little bit of like, uh like online but i enjoy like the classics more i think like that uh like that 2d pokemon stadium sure it's like simple yeah. it's a uh, it's great man I'm, i i i played warcraft for 16 years and then quit because they they did a, a level squish you know you know beforehand it was like you know you're level 80 90 and all the way up to 120 and they said oh no we're going back to level 50 if you're 120, you're no go now going back to 50. It's like, what are you talking about? It took me freaking 16 years to get that far. Yeah. Why did you dare do that? So, but I, I like, I, I'm a funny gamer. I, I have guilty pleasure games that, uh, you know, like I, and they're games that I won't play. So like GTA, I never played a single GTA game because it was based in crime. And I didn't like the whole, I mean, I, 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 I was with law enforcement on that one. Where it's like, look, you're telling people to get points for like pulling the, your car over and just beating the crap out of people for no apparent reason. But yet I'll be stuck, you know, I'll play a Bejeweled, you know, for three, you know, days straight. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not like a big gamer. If I play like modern games, it's only sports. Um, if I play, uh, uh, I play okay. classic games. But, I, uh, I didn't mind the sports games. I understood the whole EA sports thing, but it just wasn't wasn't me. I mean, I knew guys that, yeah, every season. It's like, oh, Madden, whatever I, I year it is. I think they're so well done, and it's like, uh, people say, uh, like, uh, you know, the Grand Theft Auto, like, that's kind of, like, simulation, but I feel like the video games, because you could, like, online bet on, like, the simulation games, and they're shooting their characteristics, um, they're all very similar. It's like, yeah. uh, 
So we we haven't changed that much in the, you know I was in the gaming industry for a few years and uh, the what the other than some graphics and some shadows and some water effects the the basic concept hasn't changed in a long time I mean first person I was thinking about that the other day first person shooters been around since the nineties so yeah. yeah anyway so so what how did you first um get exposed to this the documentary. Um, I wouldn't say, like, I'm a flat earther. I'm more like a skeptic on everything. That's uh, fine. I, and uh, I heard once, like, Neil deGrasse Tyson said it's shaped like a pear or some shit like that. So, yeah. Um, I, uh, yeah, I watched your documentary. Um, I have more leisure time like you now. Like, hey. I, got a, I got a pretty solid job. Like, uh, I like to coach at, like, the rec center. And other than that, I don't believe in... Um, like, uh, I think there's, like, two ways of happiness, and, like, one is just, like, you know, buying stuff, and the other is just, like, being at peace. So, uh, I find your sh your stuff very, like, soothing, whether I'm, like, for it or against it. I'm just trying to be entertained for that, you know, hour and a half, and That's it's right. hard to find, like, entertaining people. It's hard to listen to somebody for, like, an hour and a half, too. That is... Your voice is, is very captivating, and, uh, I don't know. Well, thanks. I, I, I've had people tell me, you know, because the clues are uh, seven years old in a week. And they've told me that they listen to it the first time for the content. And then the second, third time, they'll just listen to it like the when they're trying to zone out. I've, I've had people it. say, oh, yeah, when I go to bed, I, I put you on just so because you don't you don't start yelling or anything. You, you know, you, you deliver and and I can just kind of, you know, fade off. By the way, your your comment there, it's very, very true. There was a, a quote I had heard, I think it was last year, uh, and different philosophers have said it, which is your greatest treasure is should be uh, peace of mind, is contentment. It's, it's like, you know, there are people that are chasing contentment all the time, but they're looking in the wrong places. And, you know, it's, it's like, oh, no, if I get this car, if I get this house, if I get this lifestyle, I'm going to be content. It's like, oh, no. that's one way. Like, I think you could buy stuff for happiness, but I think another way is just to enjoy what you have and chill. And there was a, you're right, in, in, to a certain extent, Daniel Tosh, he made fun of that, where uh, people said, oh, you can't buy happiness. And Daniel Tosh, the comedian, he, he goes, he goes, those people obviously have never bought a jet ski. <laughs> Yeah, because you ever seen somebody frowning on a jet ski? Yeah, I've seen, I'm a big uh, Daniel Tosh fan. He's he's good. I yeah, think. he's got some he's got some great insights in that. But at the same time, it only takes you so far. But there are people if you can if you can find peace of mind without doing much at all, that's the that's the greatest gift ever. And it's very very tough to do because again. The media tells you that happiness is found, you know, in these things, and you've got to chase it. You got to chase it, and then you get the whole thing. It's like, you know, the chasing your neighbors type deal. Yeah, where, comparisons are the root of all evil. They, they're yeah. not helpful. They're, uh, Grass is always greener. Keeping up with the Joneses, phew, yeah. and to do it in America, impossible, impossible. Because even if once you reach a certain level, it's like, oh well, this guy, you know, this guy's got a, a three hundred foot super yacht. <laughs> what yeah, you I, I think uh jeez like you got to make like an effort you know sure yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, so what uh what can i answer for you what do you got uh so like every time i youtube like flat earth uh the first few like videos are like jokes do you think um like youtube or like google makes it difficult to or like to find you know good like uh, flat earth content with somebody. The algorithm worked out naturally in, in that regard. Um, so what happened was in the beginning, we were, because there were no flat earth videos out there, even as late as 2015, there were just not, there was not much in the way of flat earth. And so when we, when our circle started putting the content out there, it started generating huge amounts of interest because there was very few against flat earth. Uh, the algorithms were skewing. They were recommending Flat Earth because it was trending, but there was nobody going against Flat Earth, so no one knew what to do. So bigger and bigger channels started getting into it. And what happened was, you, you probably already know this on YouTube, if your channel is verified, checkmark verified, meaning you have 100,000 subs or more, 
you get put at the higher of the pecking order. And that can, you know, anyone from, from major news networks to I don't know, Shane Dawson and PewDiePie. Well, what if I put, like, in the search engine, you know, like, uh, like, something very believer, like, persuasive arguments. Like, I can make a search for good content, and I can't find it. Yeah, no, you're still going to get buried. There's yeah. so many, just about every large channel, and I'm not, I'm not exaggerating when I say this. Every large channel on YouTube has done um, a flat Earth video now at this point, and with, with that means there are thousands and thousands and thousands of videos, and those will always be ranked higher. So as you type in flat Earth at all, you will get, you know, the the channels, and and the bigger channel you are, the the higher degree of possibility it's going to go. I, I think uh, I don't know. I've watched a lot of your videos, and I'm just starting to get the recommendations. But do you think, um, like Google knows who's like a ge- legitimate like flat earther? In- oh, and do do the do we get censored? Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's there's censoring, and then there's shadow censoring. No flat Earth channel has been burned down because of flat Earth. Uh, YouTube is smart in that way, in that Flat Earth made them a lot of money, huge amount of money, uh, because we were their binge-worthy topic We for years. From 2015 to 2018, that's what we did. But yes, what the first thing they did to us was they uh, they took down the scoreboard. And that's a little before, well, a little bit before your time. So back in the early days of YouTube, all the way up until 2018, um, if you typed in any topic, it gave you a search results equals a number so like you typed in potato salad recipe it would say search results equals 10,000 you know not videos but just general references inside youtube and we were i started keeping track of that and posting videos mentioning it's like oh yeah by the way we're scoring higher than angelina jolie oh hey we're scoring higher than the beatles oh yeah higher we're you know we're we're just rocketing up um uh up youtube and then we caught uh, Donald Trump in the middle of 2018, and then I think five weeks later, they just turned off the scoreboard. Meaning there is no, you, you go into YouTube now, if you type in any topic I'm looking at, there is no search results line anymore. Do you it's, think that was because of Flat Earth? Oh, absolutely. It was because of us. And, and yeah. it's, that is not a delusional statement. It is absolutely, because people will say, well, and the, well, how I'll compare it to, and you probably saw this very recently, which is thumbs down is now gone from YouTube. What, when you go into any video and thumbs down, there is no number next to it anymore. And that is because the trolls were just hammering on people so bad. The trolls basically forced YouTube to remove thumbs down. Whatever you're trolling, you know, so because people like making fun of that, which is it's like, oh, there's a video out there and it has 90 <coughs> percent thumbs down. And people would make videos about that. Uh, you know, everything from uh, uh, some of the Paul Brothers videos to Friday. You know, the, the, you could even see ranked by, there was a special list, the most hated YouTube videos of all time. That list is now irrelevant because Thumbs Down is gone. But yes, the scoreboard was ripped down because of us. Absolutely That's crazy. because of us. And That's crazy. The, the only people that were ahead of us, other than like generic things like Disney, uh, we're like Katy Perry and Taylor Swift and people like that, but we had just passed Donald Trump. We were at 20.9 million and he was at 20.8 and I made a video on it. I was like, wow, really, really great. And then next thing you know, somebody calls me up they go, dude, the scoreboard's gone. I go, what? <laughs> That's impossible. You can't rip down the whole, but it's easy. I mean, it's a simple, simple thing to remove, but yes, they are shadow censoring any legitimate but at the same time, they were they were nice to me. My channel was suspended for ninety days because uh, I medical misinformation thing because I was doing anti. I think you're kind of respectful though because you say uh, something like uh, what they're doing is kind of like just because like why wouldn't they? Because it protects society because of religion and science. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I I Do you think they've noted that that you've said that? Oh, probably, probably. I've been well. No, I mean, one of my things when it comes to conspiracies, I don't care what conspiracy it is. The reason I will not. uh, Most people in the conspiracy world will look at any conspiracy, whatever it is, and they'll say it's evil, right? It's it's absolutely evil. It's black hats and handlebar mustaches and and people, you know, rubbing their hands together. (laughs) That whole thing. The what? They're insulted by it. Yes, uh, but yes. I, I come back, and you've heard my stuff, where I say, look, um, 
did the ends justify the means, no matter how horrible they were? Did they accomplish the goal that they were trying to do? And that's how I justify any conspiracy. I go, I look at it and I go, if I was a black hat, <laughs> would I have done the same thing? And if I, and, or improve, could I have improved on it? Or, and I look, and I go, oh yeah, I, I can totally see that. And I'm like, then it's real. Because I, for me, it's like, yeah, that's what I would have done if, if I, I mean, I'm one of those guys, like in an, in an alternate universe, I would have been in a government think tank somewhere doing stuff like this. This is just, it's just how I work. I've got a certain moral flexibility. Uh, the greater good means more to me than a, a lot of people. A lot of people is like, no, the greater good is all, it's a cop out. It's, it's, you know, the individual make, no, no, it's not the individual. It's the greater good. It's the empire. I, I was I was sad when the Death Star blew up. How about that? Okay. Uh, do you, so, do you think there's like truth to the movies we watch? Like, uh, I know you're a big fan of like the Thirteenth Floor, Matrix, like Truman Show. Do you think like production companies like Warner Brothers, um, they or like oh yeah yeah they yeah, know yeah. something we don't? Oh yeah yeah concepts. Look, <laughs> the media is entertainment, but only at a surface level. The, the government has been involved with television and movie production since the beginning. And that you just, you, if you want to push a narrative out there, be it um, war or virtual reality or transhumanism or whatever it is, you can make that happen. Uh, we, we've seen it many times over the years. Well, heck, so it, why would they give us movies like that, though? Then, why like, why give us the Matrix and the Thirteenth Floor? Yeah, wouldn't that that kind of like encourages those uh those thoughts? It encourages an open mindedness to reality. How's that? Where you are, you know, you may not live. It, it, first off, you got to remember the government is not a huge fan of religion because it's very difficult to control, and it's very religion is very old and structured, and it's unmovable. In, in, from that standpoint. So bringing in something like the Matrix diminishes, I mean, a lot of people in the tech, in the tech world, and I'm com I come from that world, don't go to church at all. Even though 80% of the world t is tied into one of the ma five major religions, there's a lot of people that are in tech that don't go to church. And as you know, year after year and year, more and more people are into tech. I mean, everyone lives on this. There are more people that own, um, and there's 6 billion smartphones in the world. There are more people have phones than running water. That's saying something, you know, when you're in, when you're holding computers. So, and by the way, I, let me mention one more thing, which is um, the you'll notice this now if you watch television or movies because I'm going to tell you about it. Look for it, which is there is a globe in every television show that doesn't have an overt space reference. So if the if the show has nothing to do with space and there's no you don't see something about the moon on, you know, the moon missions or space shuttle missions or satellites or anything like that, if it's just a generic show like a detective series or um a comedy or whatever it is, you will find a scene with a globe in frame, usually high up above the 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 character's head for no apparent reason I, at all. I have a lot of childhood memories with like globes and uh i remember we had this globe when i was a child that had a uh, like soviet union on it instead of russia oh yeah and my dad thought of it as like an antique kind of thing and like spinning it putting your hand on it yeah, oh yeah all yeah that. it is it is the most wonderful i mean outside of the classroom seriously when you watch watch any crime show it's like yeah i get it the the globes in the classroom get that why is the globe in the corner of a doctor's office I don't know. I'll give you a pass on that one. But why is there a globe on top of the filing cabinets of every detective's office I've ever seen in my life? It's like cops do not care, nor do they need a globe in their office. I, I'm with you. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't see why you would need it. Like no, office, but so. but but it's easy to for, think about it from a producer standpoint. It is the easiest thing. A lot of people don't know when it comes to production. You can go into any television show or movie. Let's say you had ten thousand dollars. And you go to any any movie production house and you say, I'm going to give your movie $10,000 and you give me, you know, a, a little credit notice in the in the credits, right? And they, they say, okay, what else do you want? And all you have to do is say, I would like to help set design this scene here, this room. And they go, fine, we'll take your money. We don't care. And then all you do is put it, you, it's like you put a lamp here, a globe here, and some stupid other thing here. And then the director looks at it, goes, yeah, I don't care. That's fine. <laughs> we'll take your money. They do not care. So you do that to every show is the most brilliant um, reinforcement ever. Because remember, after the kids leave the classroom, 
they don't see the globe anymore. So you got to keep, got to keep pushing it. How do you, um, how do you personally go about learning more about the world we live in? Because there's like a direct path. Like, if you want to be like an ophthalmologist, a police officer, um, like whatever it is, like what, what do is, you, what is your path? Like? You, for for me, and I started out in negative territory because I grew up on an island that was very sheltered. I mean, I didn't even know there was more than one religion until I left the island and went to university. So the the thing I learned. What, what college did you go to? I went to two. I went to uh, Washington State up in uh, Pullman, and then I ended up going to Western, which I was thrown out of my junior year uh, for manufacturing explosives on campus, which is a That's whole, sweet. yeah, whole other thing. wasn't a Ted Kaczynski type deal. I was I was making um, fireworks. He's fascinating. Have you seen his documentaries? Oh yeah, I've watched a lot on on Ted. That is it. Yeah, that is a fascinating dude, and. I love the fact if you watch the, like the fictional crime version six part miniseries on it, he was fascinating because then you real when when you get to the part where you realize when he was at Harvard that the CIA was running the early MK Ultra programs and he signed up for it because they're like, well, it's Harvard. Let's start up, start off with these guys and see what we can do psychologically to damage them, and he just kept coming back for more. And then they basically broke him. They just they just broke they him. Yeah. They broke his brain. And what'd you think was gonna happen? So when the government I thought it was just the most wonderful irony where the government spent millions of dollars and man hours and all these, you know, they could not find this guy. And and then you realize, well, yeah, you trained him <laughs> basically to be one of you. What'd you think? And he's smarter than you on top of it. They would have never caught him if again if it wasn't for the manifesto all he all he wants like yeah i want you to publish my manifesto and just bl blind luck that one of his relatives found the manifesto and and called it in called in the tip line they never would have found him never you think his brother him. feels guilty at all uh depends if he got the reward money or not because i think they were offering like a million bucks I think um he has money though man so like I, I don't know. I the, hey, look, he's still that's alive. His brother, I, no matter what, that's I guess his girl kind of did it, but at the same time, that's yeah. I don't know. I mean, it it was an interesting interesting series, but yeah, talk about the the worst guy you would want to. I mean, it, it played right out of a Hollywood movie, which is you know you <laughs> you you train this guy. It, it's one thing if he was just some guy off the street, but then you realize, oh no, the CIA, you know worked on him for for years and then it, now anyway so so back to your question um what i do is I, I i look at the headlines and i assume whatever headline i'm reading um is or whatever book i'm reading there's an ulterior motive behind it that's that's how i start i'm not i don't go the the route of that it's an immediate hoax but i think okay why is this story being run and then I try to dig in behind it and, and say, okay, what's happening with this company or organization? So even stu stupid stuff, like when you see, you know, a story that says, you know, why eggs or egg cholesterol is good for you, right? You read it and it's like, oh, okay, who funded that study? Oh, you know, the, the egg people. <laughs> and, you know, you can buy your news. That The part that, that bugs me right now is that, and, and it's easy to do if you, if you want to do it, is there is fake news. You just have to break out of whatever it is. So it's the easiest thing I tell people is I, I say, okay, you say there's no fake news. And I go, okay, fine. Everything on CNN is absolutely true. And everything on Fox News is absolutely true. Well, you can't resolve both those statements because both <laughs> sides just hammer on each other and accuse each other of lying all the time. So it's who's lying? Probably both of them. But you don't, you, it's, it's tough to decipher. But just getting to that point where you realize that, yes, news can be bought and usually is bought because there is no such thing as objective journalism. There never has been. A company, you know, a news agency is owned by a parent company, which is owned by a bigger parent company. And those people have agendas straight up. I mean, look, you, you, economies need to be controlled and people need to be controlled and you have to do it through, through. Yeah. News. Viacom, Disney, Sirius XM, Spotify, Amazon prime. They're all major companies, uh, 
which they out there, have, if you're listening, you should buy shares of them because they control everything. They, yeah. they all, yeah, they all have shares. Yeah, they all have a, the, there's, they all have like a A-list spokesperson for them, whether that be like Howard Stern, Joe Rogan. Uh, yep. And everybody protects their own. That's that's the other thing. It's like, look, they these people are in it to make money. The the reason why the news always did, you know, the, the the running joke for years, which was even back in the way before the internet, where where the news people would say, you know, a couple household chemicals could probably kill you right now, and we'll tell you about it after weather and sports. We'll be right back. <laughs> it's like, right? Why why would you cliffhang that? Why wouldn't he, you leave it? Speaking of sports, Kyrie Irving. Um, yeah. Has he uh, ever reached out to you? No. No, 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 no. If he did there's reach no, out there's... to you, would you, and he asked you, hey, Mark, uh, keep this on the low. Don't tell anyone. Would you keep it a secret? I think you would. Oh, uh, no, I, I've kept secrets for other celebrities. Yeah, I think, I think he's, because he's no. a legitimate flat earther. Oh, yeah. well, yeah, but he's not even um, our big, seen... yeah, he's not even our biggest one. You know, the biggest one, our, our biggest guy he's right now. the biggest one? Not right now. I mean, he was, but now. I don't know. Who's bigger here. than him? Uh, this guy that I'm putting in chat right now. Oh, right. Joe, is it the tennis player? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Novak. Yeah, he might be bigger just because, like, in well, the just, state, just though, because, you know, just Kyrie because Irving's bigger. Well, Kyrie Irving's bigger in terms of I see. I don't know who makes more money, be it Novak or 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 Kyrie, but Novak, you know, became the the biggest headline in sports for what, a couple of weeks. I mean, and that's across the world. There's people in other countries do not know who. Yeah, Kyrie no, no, I'm with you. He he's bigger. I'm saying like in the U.S. though. Oh, in the U.S. Kyrie Irving. Although I, I'm sure there are bigger out there, but they're not going to talk about it. Like for example, do I think Aaron Rodgers is mm, probably? Uh, do I think basically if they're if they're anti uh, jab, they're probably you know they probably are aware of our stuff, uh, which is why for example Kyrie. He, he's not he's not into it um but yeah if Kyrie wanted to talk about anything sure that's fine but he doesn't have to because he was so I think I fit, he might be listening to this man I um I think he might be I, I feel bad for Kyrie because he got caught in a weird position he got too confident you gotta remember when he came out he was what 24 um and he was he had just gotten his championship he's had his ring on his finger going to the all-star game with LeBron, you know, he's playing with LeBron and one of his buddies who was doing a podcast and I can't remember his name off the top of my head, you know, just asked him on the plane, you know, Kyrie was, you know, his, his attitude was way, way up here. It's like, you know, he's thinking to himself, what are you going to do to me? I got a shoe line. I got LeBron. I got my ring. I'm untouchable. But then you realize that, you know, eventually next year, there's going to be a different champion probably. And the reporters have access to the locker rooms every single night, you know, 100 games. And they're going, what do you think they're going to talk about? They're not going to come in and talk to you about offense and defense and coaching and crap. They're going to ask you about Flat Earth every single night. So when he came out on um, Forbes magazine 30 under 30, when he did that lecture with, you know, some of the people, influential people under the age of 30, uh, he apologized to the science teachers. He didn't retract flat earth and media wanted him to, you know, they said, Oh, Kyrie retract. No, no, he didn't retract from flat earth. He was apologizing to this, to the, uh, to the science teachers because this, the, the inner city science teachers were getting crushed. Meaning what was happening was, so imagine you're a science teacher, right? In a, in a, in a city, city environment. And you're talking to your kids. It's like, well, yeah, here's the globe. And all of a sudden hands go up and they're saying, yeah. So my man, Kyrie, He's got a shoe line and he's, you know, makes $10 million a my year. My kids, my, like my third and fourth graders uh, at the rec center, they wear his shoes. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah, he's a big guy. Yeah, he's got, he's got huge street cred. So when they, they say, you know, Kyrie has massive street cred, what do you have, teach? The teacher's got nothing to come back with. It's like, uh. So they kept sending, they kept emailing Kyrie. Kyrie's like, I, I'm sorry. And, you know, but somebody had to lose. So anyway, yeah. but yeah, I Sorry, guys, if, if Kyrie my, uh... to talk, I'd love to talk to him. I don't know exactly what we talk about. Cause he knows the game, you know, he knows, he knows everything. Have you, uh, like, I think like 15 days ago, he had this like interview, uh, with this reporter asking, cause like, he's not getting the vaccine and, right. uh, they kept hammering him and he's like, dude, like I'm a, like, I'm not just a basketball player. Like I'm a person. There's a. Uh, like there's more to Kyrie. So like on your statement, like yeah, I do kind of feel bad for the guy. He's um, 
He's. Did, did you see that, by the way? Uh, well, I, I mean, I've been following his thing. I knew, I knew he wasn't going to get it. If you're into flat, if you're in the whole flat Earth, you're not getting the shot. You're just not. You, I, you I because once, it's once, cra- I think it's crazy to get it. Um, you know, year two even because it's just it's science. It'll get better with time. It's um, to, or sorry, like I'm not a, I have, I'm not, I'm not, not, not vaccinated. Um. I'm not saying. Like, Why not? What's wrong with you? You're not being safe. You're, you're not being responsible. You don't care about the people around you. What's wrong with you, man? Uh, I think there's other preventative measures like uh, take uh, vitamin C, wear a mask. Like in China, as soon as that shit came out, they just shipped everybody vitamin C. It was just at your doorstep. It was mandated. So like, well, um, I, I don't know. I think it's more if we're of a risk if, to take the vaccine than to not take it at this point. So I'm not taking it. I am a big believer of. Well, again, there's. I can uh, w- w- let's talk about it. It's just you and I right now, anyway. Yeah, uh, my annoying girlfriend who just came home. I'm sorry, Mark. But oh, do you want to say hi? Sure. Be quick, hi. Really quick. Hi. hi. <laughs> he didn't go to as good a school as me, Mark. I went to Cal Poly Pomona. She went to San Marcos. Oh. So she's uh, yeah, she's not on our level, Mark. That's that's all right. Um, <laughs> like. Like the the you notice like when when Joe Rogan brought was starting to bring on doctors onto his show he was getting they couldn't hit him they're they're still trying even today they're trying to see see what it will take if anything to get Spotify to back down and you know so they like they had the doctor sign and then the Surgeon General you know and then Neil Young was pulling his stuff and and Joni Mitchell and and some of the other artists I'm going look he's got the number one podcast in the country. If he was top 10, maybe you'd have some wiggle room to mess with. He, they spent a hundred million on this guy to, to get him on, you know, to do exclusive Spotify. They're not yanking him, but they're, but it's, it surprised me somewhat that, that uh, the new world order didn't own Spotify. Cause if you owned it, you can just shut it down, you know, do whatever. But in this case, they, I think they were worried that if, he left Spotify because his his base is so big that he would just move off to another platform, and he probably would. So I don't know. Anyway, the back to the point. The point is uh, is that Kyrie was never. I, I watched him in the beginning. I knew full well he was going to take it because once you're into the whole flatter thing, everything else becomes assumed. Meaning, uh, it's like, look, they can lie about where we are. Then they can lie about anything. And everything else is smaller by comparison. So why why wouldn't they? I mean, they lie. I, you know, I pick on like the American wars. We've lied about every war we've ever been in because you don't want to be the bad guys. Like America, the, you know, like white hats and shiny and sparkly, and we do all all the cool stuff. You know, America, f yeah. But no, no, we just we spin ourselves like that. Anyway, what um, what was it like filming the documentary? I thought they were kind of uh. I thought they were kind of fair. They, you know, they gave you a lot of camera time. Um, in your opinion, what, what did you think of it? They were, they, it was exactly what I thought it was going to be, uh, with a twist at the end, which was, they, it was supposed to be a, a human interest piece, pretty neutral. And I did not even know until, there's a director's commentary out there on one version. It's on the iTunes version. And I didn't know. Someone said, you got to listen to this. Oh, I got to listen to that. And I listened to it. Well, I, I know I'll just give you the crib notes because it's boring. Okay. But you get you get to the point where, because the people that were directing us, they're not exactly super personalities. But they um, you got to the end where the kid was, the 12-year-old kid was asking me questions while I was on stage. And I at that point, the producer, the director, and one of the editors immediately chimed in. All, all it's like, yeah, this is the part where we had to take a stand against Flat Earth. And it's like, it, because the kid was there. And it's like, well, it's all fun and games until the kids are involved. It's like, what? <laughs> During the entire shoot, the shoot was actually very nice. You know, I spent time with these guys. We, we were off and on for seven months. And we, we shot in various locations, and it was, it was a blast. Uh, and we, I didn't, I knew they weren't flat earthers. I knew this. Uh, as a matter of fact, one of the producers had done a previous amateur sort of film that was against the whole Sandy Hook conspiracy, saying that, oh no, Sandy Hook was absolutely real, and here's why, and everybody else is just being insensitive. 
And they never changed their minds at any point. And afterwards, oh, they just resented us. So at the at the end, you know, like the director never called me for any reason whatsoever. Uh, they never did a sequel. They had no faith in the project. It was this was a side project for these guys. These guys had normal jobs in in other production houses, and they decided to, the the just to branch off on their own and spend a little money and do this. So they said, "Oh, we'll probably not get into any film festivals," and they got into every one they submitted to. And then they said, well, it's not going to get picked up. It's not going to win any awards. Or, and it's like, no, no, no. It was ranking in the top 10 of every film festival they were in. And it got picked up immediately by Amazon and iTunes. And it's like, well, it's not going to get picked up by anyone. And then Netflix picked it up. And then it just ran from there. But at no point did they, did they want to do it. It was almost like they regretted doing it. To where, again, no sequel or follow-up was ever even hinted at. At it's still kind of early, though. It's still kind of no, early. no. It's not. No, it's in fact it's leaving Netflix. It's been on Netflix for three years. Oh, it's, it's leaving Netflix. Yeah, it's leaving Netflix in. Uh, what happens nine... when it leaves Netflix? Where does it go? Oh well, it's still well, it, you know, nowadays. It doesn't matter. It'll probably. It's I don't know who's buying the 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 rights. Maybe Hulu or Vudu or whatever. But it's still going to be on Amazon and and iTunes and. and... Well, like, I don't know. I uh, like Prime Video can have it for free, or they can make you pay for it. So. Hopefully well, Prime, Prime Prime Video makes you pay for it. Uh, I don't know, but again, it's it was out. Do they sign like contracts with these like movies? Like, hey, we get your movie for like three years, kind of thing. Well, for that one, they did. I I think you know people's the what people don't know about streaming uh, or they find out pretty quick is that things get swapped out fairly quickly when it comes to which is why some of the bigger houses like when Disney bought marvel and fox and you know they was like no no we're owning those forever and then hbo said we're gonna own all the matrix stuff and we're gonna own all the, all the other crap so but the others um, the others in, have to do it for a limited run in in that documentary uh that girl like patricia steer not yeah. to, like you guys had really good chemistry um when's the last time you spoke with her or we had a little bit of a falling out uh, we did, we, we did, it was funny cause we did the documentary, but we had a relationship before the documentary. And then during the documentary, they painted it like it was happening still. Like it just was like, no, we, we had been kind of doing our own thing for at least a year before the documentary shot. Um, but then we did a conference in the, so the first conference was in, uh, Raleigh. The second conference was in Denver. And the problem, you know, I will blame the, the falling out between Patricia and I on one of the internet banes of existence, Logan Paul, because he showed up at the Denver conference and he kept it a secret. He had the, the conference promoter keep it an absolute secret. And when he fought, when it was finally, he finally showed and I found out it was him the, the night before I lost my mind. But the problem was that there's a lot of people in the conspiracy world that are, are older right you know they're in their 40s and 50s and stuff and nobody knew who the hell he was because his demographic is so young and so i was one of the few people that did enough internet research i'm like this guy can't be here and it's like no no he's gonna do a serious piece i go and he's never done anything serious in his life <laughs> this guy is a complete troll they go you can't let him you can't and then i heard he was gonna be on stage i'm going what <laughs> You can't. Are you guys taking more preventative measures to make sure stuff like that doesn't happen? Well, I'll follow this. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you the pro. There's a problem with that. You can't. You can't solve it entirely. Anyway, so I walked out of the Denver conference. I never even did my set. I said, I said, screw this. I go, I go. If you let Patricia Steer hanging? I did. I did. Oh man! And, and I, I felt, I felt bad, but at the same time, look, look, I gave everyone ample warning. I said, this guy should not be here for. We sold tickets based on this mystery internet celebrity that was going to show up and people were, you know, and the promoter kept saying, Oh no, he's a mainstream actor. He's this or mainstream singer. I'm going, who the hell is it? It was this big guessing game. Then when I found out it was Logan Paul, I was like going, Oh my God. And it was absolutely right. Cause when he released his, the thing on it three months later, it was a complete troll job and it was awful. So the next year we, pro we, we told the promoter, it's like no surprises, no sneaky stuff. You let us know when somebody shows up. So the next year, which was Dallas, um, which was 2019, um, Jimmy Kimmel sent a team. It's like, all right, I fun. Saw so, that. I yeah. saw that. Yeah. 
However, what he you did came off really good in it, though. You came, well, thank I you. wanted to let you know, like in the video, you came off kind of sharp. You're like, dude, I'm doing an interview. Like, get out of here. Yeah, and and you the didn't swear is- or anything. You were cool. Like, Thank you. And I didn't know I didn't know he was part what see what they did was they did a like a four or five man team. It's like, you know, they came in with press credentials and then they had this guy pay full freight and just dress up like a flat earther and you know just come in. The thing was he was drunk, actually drunk. That's <laughs> what the hell he was doing. And and people were saying, How did you not know he was fake? I'm going, you know, as far as flat earthers go, he wasn't the worst I'd seen that day. <laughs> Even that day. So yes, when I was being when when you saw me being nice, I was being absolutely authentic to him because I thought he was one of us. I was, you know, hell, the stuff even off camera. I gave him a book and you know, you know, magazine, you know, signed stuff and and the whole nine yards. And right after the segment with me, if he had played it cool, he could have been there all day. Um, some, <laughs> somebody he could have. He absolutely could have been there all. How long? How long was he there for? Only a couple hours. He made it through my set. He, you know, he made sure he was the first one to ask questions during my set, and then he he just couldn't contain himself. He was too outside of the lines, and so some of our people, you know, could sniff it out, and they're like, "All right, get this guy out of here." And what the the the, the giveaway was, of course, he was hot mic'd the entire time, and the the Jimmy Kimmel's team, his his camera team, seemed awfully interested in him. They were always shooting him no matter where he was. And so, but they were trying to play it cool and everything. So that weird part where the interview, I was interviewing with Jimmy Kimmel's team and it was Jimmy Kimmel's guy that was interrupting. And so it was this weird dynamic, but I didn't know. It's like, no, 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 dude, I got to talk to these guys. And he's trying to be, you know, his asshole self, but people try to get triggered and it it generally does not work. So anyway, but yeah, it's, so it's tough. You can't stop trolls like that. And that was the last conference we did, but we were in 2020. We were supposed to do um, Vegas. It was oh, Vegas would have been so much fun. And uh, Patricia and I actually thought about doing Vegas all the way back in 2016, and we didn't because we didn't know how people would react to a conference. And now we regret it because that would have been a lot of fun. Yeah. But, oh, sorry. Seen... So I haven't I haven't talked to her in a uh, year and a half, probably. Yeah, you, you should reach out to her, man. She, because like she, together, um, like you guys she, would make good content, and I think you guys would be better for the movement. Like, thank you. That alone is like I know, should be enough of a reason. Well, okay. There's there's a secondary part to this, which is somebody doxed her. You know, she lives in Houston, yeah. And somebody doxed her address, and they started, you know, sending stuff to her house, and then they did a well. The thing that 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 pulled her away from the community for at least a year. I mean, entirely. I mean, she she tore, tore down her channels. She took her license plate off her car. Um, was they uh, did a wellness check? Do you know what those are? No. A wellness check is when your neighbor doesn't come out of his house for a while. Maybe, maybe they're older or whatever. And you call the cops and you say, "Hey, can you do a wellness check and knock on this person's door and look in the windows and make sure they're alive?" So they made sure they did this during one of her podcasts. Oh, that's and, messed up. Yeah, it's not as bad as swatting, which you've probably heard of. You know what swatting is? Oh, okay. No, uh, swatting ignorance, swatting is swatting's way worse, and swatting's very, very illegal. Wellness check, not illegal at all. Swatting absolutely is, is illegal, which is you call up from a burner phone and you say, Oh, hey, I'm at you find a podcast that's going live, right? And you call up and you say, you find out where that podcast is, and you say, "Hey, I'm at one, two, three Maple Street. Um, I've already shot two people, and I'm about to shoot three more." Oh, wow. and, and then the cops show up, and they do not knock; <laughs> they just kick everything in. And uh, it's 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 tougher to do now, but there's been it's been awful. Anyway, so the point was, Patricia went to the door. And there's cops there, and she's like, and she's like, "I'm fine, whatever." And she played it really, really cool. The second she got in the door, she calls me and she goes, I am done. She was, that is it. She was, I am going off grid for a while. And, uh, and she was true to her word. She, you know, the trolls, the trolls got to her, but in all fairness, and you probably heard me say this on different things. I told her many, many times, I said, do not read the comments in YouTube. Do not read them because you will go insane because it, you know how it is human nature. You read nine great comments. You're wonderful. You're great. And you read a 10th comment. You suck and should die. It's all you're going to care about. 
is that one. It's like, why does that person hate me so much? And you dwell on this. Multiply that by hundreds and hundreds of people, and Patricia just couldn't take it. I, I told her, I go, you're going to burn out. I go, you read every video, comment on every video, you try to sanitize it. What happens when you get 200 videos? You're going to lose it. You're going to snap. Yeah, goes, that's yeah. crazy. You can't be that concerned with people's opinion. Uh, social media. There's people that live and die on social I, media. I don't have social media, so I'm pretty good for you. Yeah, good for you. Um, let's see. So there's a. You don't think there's going to be a second documentary? Oh, I know there's not going to be a second documentary. No, who who's going to do it? The original team's not going to do it. I don't know if they even have if they sold the rights off to somebody or if they sold it off to Netflix. Now, if Netflix decided to go out of their way and do something, yeah, sure. But the original people that were tied to that project, they want nothing to do with it at all. They yeah. again because they they don't they they never they they could not get past the denial stage, which was uh, people are in you know the, the five forms of acceptance: um, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and finally acceptance. They could not get past denial which is we don't believe that they believe it. That's the part that blew me away. It's, it's like they could not, I mean, which why the conference was, was so staggering to them. The, the first conference from the documentary is like they're walking around and they, they couldn't believe, they thought that like that I didn't believe it and I was just leading people down the path. And it's like, what are you talking about? Why, when, when I'm, I've been doing this now for, you know, going on seven years, when exactly am I going to reveal my master plan? They they couldn't get past it. Well, some some sign and which is why I've always told people I go look if you have a higher if you have a master's degree or higher in any sort of physical science, nothing I can do for you. You you will never you will never be able to relate at all. So yeah. Anyway. Um, cool questions. All right. So uh, do you believe there's a dome or do you believe there isn't a dome? Dome. Yeah. There's... Dome versus dome versus no dome. I believe in dome. One reason, one reason only, and that's the pressure issue, which is uh, pressure, thermal dynamics says that pressure cannot exist to non-pressure without a barrier. The dome is the barrier. So if you don't have a dome, then what's up there? Just space? Or, you know, eventually you're going to have to have some structure over it, which is why it's called atmospheric pressure, in my opinion, which is why it's called greenhouse gases. Greenhouse gases doesn't even make sense unless it's an actual greenhouse. The, the argument, you've heard me say this before, which is if there's a vacuum chamber above you and you pull the valve, the, the air rushes up, right? Immediately. Yeah. So when you are outside, why is, your, why is the atmosphere still here? And you're, you will knee jerk it and say, oh, well, it's gravity. I go, you mean the same gravity that couldn't keep the air in your room from going upstairs? That gravity? What, what happened? You know, it's, and, and I've even had people say, well, there's, there's more gravity. It's like, no, same gravity. In fact, space is way, way, you know, if you believe in the whole space thing, the vacuum chamber is is way more pure. In... Do you believe there's an ozone layer? Like, um, oh yeah, in... yeah, 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 I do. Yeah. No, but but I don't. But I think it's inside the system, up towards the top. Sure. And well, then, um, has anyone seen the dome? No. Well, no well let's wait. There's like one Nobody, person that's no, seen it. Uh, have people seen the dome? Yes. Are they allowed to talk about it? No. When they uh, see it, do they get like gunned down? Like um... no, 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 no civilians ever going to reach it, ever ever going to reach it. Um, the uh, uh, I'll use the Neil deGrasse Tyson line because uh, he was saying when he was talking about the Red Bull jump and saying that. Um... Oh, speaking of really quick, I think like yeah. um, he did this thing where he's like, "Our Earth's not flat," and he like dropped the mic and uh, kind of just looked foolish to me. I don't know, like it, that was it just comedy. looks so eccentric and. Uh... The comedy, I, 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 I criticized that. Yeah, that was on Comedy Central when they did the big science alert thing and they brought him out for a six or seven minute monologue. And what blew me away there is how little they put into the production value. You know, he was just talking and he was talking so far above the people's heads in the audience. And I know they were doing the whole applause sign thing. It's like your laugh or whatever. No, he was he was throwing out stuff to the audience that they had no idea what it was. But at no point did he do a video clip. Did he do any graphics? Did he do any special effects whatsoever? It's like that's how you you would have done, you know, should have done it if you wanted to convince people. It was all he, so use the Tiger Woods line. Um, well, he, he just made a statement. He yeah, didn't he just say made a statement to validate his point. Yeah, that's that's 
that's all he did. And so it's like, okay, so are you just kind of going through the motions? Because I don't, I don't even think they want him to convince people as much as half-heartedly just bring the topic to light. It just blew me away. It was like, wow. It's like, I wouldn't have gone gone that route. In fact, I would have been, if I was him, I wouldn't have gone on stage. I don't think he himself can, like, go on his laptop and watch himself do that without, like, stopping it, like, halfway through. Because it looks like, it looks weird, you know? Yeah, yeah it, was a, it, was a, it was a very lame attempt by Comedy Central. But I think it was partially orchestrated. I mean, no different than um, Jimmy Kimmel bringing Shaq on. You know, Shaq was with us for 10 days. And then, you know, one of his sponsors, well, a lot of them, a lot of them are kind of with like, and then they, they back out pretty quickly. If you have sponsors, he said something funny. He's like, uh, yeah, I drew up one in Miami to LA. It seemed like pretty flat on the way there. Like, I don't, yeah. I think when like, um, like when they built like the transcontinental ra- railroads and they had like Irish immigrants on the East and they had like the Chinese immigrants on the West. I yeah. don't think they explained to those immigrants about curvature and like how to make these rails. No. No, no, exactly. <laughs> well, hell, you could even go all the way back to the the Roman aqueducts. You know, the the big water channels going back thousands of years. They didn't know anything about curvature formulas. Absolutely not. So no, the railways, the pipelines, uh, anything. The I've had so many people from different industries call me up. It's like, no, dude, we don't take. Oh well, hell, the military guys. I mean, I've got a subject matter list on my on my channel, which is you know, military guys. They all said the same thing. It's like when you're shooting something a long, long way, like a cannon or a missile or whatever weapon system you're using, you don't take into account curvature, or or even the spinning of the earth. Which is why every once in a while, CNN will run a story. It's like, oh, this sniper fired a whole mile, and he had to take into account the curvature. It's like, really? Because I got a I got a tank guy over here shooting like 11 miles. And he doesn't, it doesn't, it's not in there at all. In fact, my, one of my favorite, uh, one of my best friends, um, who's a tank guy, he said, he goes, do you know how hard it would be? Do you know how difficult war would be if we had to take into account the spin of the earth and the curvature? He goes, no one would get anything done. Everyone would miss all the time. He goes, you couldn't even do artillery. It'd just be impossible because then you'd have to – your artillery wouldn't be based on how far away they were. It'd be like where you are on the on the map because the spin, it's like, oh, no, it's going to drift this way. Anyway. You want to hear something else that's like – I got to keep saying this. I'm not like a flat earther. It's I'm, all right. Like, uh, I'm not like a – but I, um, I think we need skeptics. I think we need people to question the world we live in. I think it's good for dialogue. I think it's good – Um. Yeah. Do you remember like – ufos and aliens and all that stuff was like a joke a mockery and now it's like now it's mainstream now everybody believes it and uh, oh, yeah, everybody believes you know, aliens 40 now. 50 years ago you would have been a fool you would have been yes. an absolute fool you would uh you'd be ostracized too just like yeah. that modern day flat earthers D- yes yeah the alien uh, agenda everything from and i was a big fan of ancient aliens the series um which was but How now about, um what was the one? The Close Encounters of, like, the Fifth Kind? Did you see that one? With, like, Third, doctors? Oh, you mean the, the 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 documentary, The Fifth Kind? Yeah, I think that's what it's called. With, like, um, yeah, not the, the Third career. Kind, not the old 70s movie. No, no, not that one. Uh, no, the, the Fifth Kind, yeah, where they're dr- trying to do the whole, yeah, expose. It's like, not oh, yeah. a band? No, well, no, it's fine. But for me, it, it was a done deal years ago, which is, look, once, once... Once you we confirmed again through HD cameras that Roswell Groom Lake was a real place, then everything's back on the table. Meaning that of course you'll like the again TV shows and movies like Stargate, the the TV show, which technically when you're watching it, you realize that the public would know none of it. It's complete. Everything you're watching is classified. But the concept was we find alien technology and we reverse engineer it. Yeah, that's what we would do. You know, it went, now the only difference for for me is that the aliens aren't from Mars and Jupiter and, and Venus. They're just interdimensional or they're from here. They're just older versions of us. I'm a huge believer that civilizations rise and fall. And for whatever reason, they have to go somewhere else, be it subterranean or somewhere else, you know, somewhere interdimensional. I don't know, but they can't stay on the surface. It's kind of like, you know, graduating seniors. You don't have to go home, but you got to get the hell out of here because we had another class coming in. And yeah. don't come, don't come back to school because you're going to be disruptive. Do whatever you need to out there, but we don't want to see you anymore. And that you don't think anything like that will happen in our lifetime, right, or the next lifetime? No, I I think it's I think we're 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 damn due at at this. You stage. think so? 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, I we're, think we're good. I think we're good for. I think maybe like the next lifetime or the lifetime after that. I don't think we have to wait that long. Really, I, I, that's crazy. Uh, we're we, because think of it this way: like, are you, you a prepper, Mark? Do you have like gold bars and like food stashed and like? Not necessarily gold bars. Uh, most, but yeah, no. I wrote a prep. I, there's, a, I have a prepper book on Amazon. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> I got. I, I should read more of your stuff. I. That's right. I, the YouTube man. That's what I watch. No, no, it's fine. You wouldn't know anyway. The um, the in fact, I read the uh the first. I read the pretty much the whole book in like my first episodes of Strange World. But yeah, no, I'm a big believer now. As far as gold and silver, what what people try, I try to remind people is like, yeah, gold and silver, it's great, but you got to get past the the bad stage before you get back to the gold and silver, and that'd be the you know the guns and ammo stage. Which is there's you know every every survival movie out there. Oh yeah yeah yeah, you get to the stage where where you know gold and silver might work, but honestly, it's all the consumables that are worth something in the immediate future. And, you know everything from um, you know cigarettes to alcohol to uh, you know prescription drugs to all the stuff that people would want immediately. You know gold and silver, great, but it only means something at when when uh, civilization's stable. That makes so much sense, man. That's uh, that's pretty, that's pretty intelligent. Is that your? Did um, did you think of that, or did you read that somewhere? Like, no, like, no, no, it's not. It's not a new way of thinking. It, but it is something that people miss. I I run into. No, so... I miss that too. Like, uh, because I got like gold bars and like silver. Hey, I never thought that. Like, hey, man, like this shit means nothing until. You know, yeah, until until the dust settles. Eventually, yeah, it'd be worth some worth a lot, worth a great deal. But you got to make it to that point. Because uh, the you know the, I don't know how many different movies I could reference. Uh, the, probably the the most famous out there uh, based on the novel would be called The Road, which is p- things get. That's you, a we, sad movie. It is a very. I saw that movie and I was kind of pissed off. I watched it. It, it was a very sad movie. You're absolutely yeah yeah. Don't watch that movie. No, don't watch that movie. It's it's yeah. very sad. But but it it's true in in the that people well I forget about that movie. Um, people tend to there's a well, i'll use the line from batman from s- some years ago and that is people are only good as their the system allows them to be and it was the joker line where he goes he goes you wait he goes he goes when the chips are down these civilized people they'll eat each other and what he was talking about was the fairies if you remember that movie you know both had detonators both, both those boats would have blown up i don't know what Chris, christopher nolan was thinking it's like wait, those... re- really quick mark have you seen the movie the platform it's on netflix where there's like that food and it drops layers and layers and uh no you haven't seen that that's no a, that's a movie you would enjoy all right i will uh, i will watch the platform. That, that's a movie that like shows you uh that doesn't give you like faith in humanity and you see what happens when you starve somebody and well i mean look the, and it's the kind reason... of like the end of time well like uh like quick synopsis like these people agree to be on these platforms and they're like 150 stories and each platform has like the best food in the world and it's huge, and it drops down, drops down. And where you're placed on this platform is random. So if you're, like, one, then, you know, you get all this, and then you just leave it. And uh, so you want to be as close up as possible. If you're down here, you know, you're eating each other. It's crazy. Oh, and it's I, gotta, in, I gotta watch and it. And it's in Spanish. Yeah, it's in Spanish, I believe. That makes so, sense. Uh, they've been it, replacing big, a lot. It's actually really uh, popular, too. I think it's trending on Netflix. You should watch all right, it. It's all on right. that, like, Squid what? Games kind of level. The um, I will definitely watch it. Um, the 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 intro to the uh, the book on Amazon, the prepper book, is um, it goes into it, the reason I wrote it was because of Katrina, years ago, which is before your time, which is Katrina, the, the all of New Orleans had to leave. You know, they evacuated. Oh, that was during my time. I remember when that happened. All right, only half the city came back, but of those people that came back, most of them didn't prep. And it's like. It's like you got chased out of the city. You had no water. You had no food. You had to run for your lives. It's like, why aren't you prepping? And it just pissed me off to no end that I wrote the book. And I, and I tried to explain to people that it's like, look, denial is the most predictable human response ever. And people just don't think it's going to happen to them. I was like, all right, I get it. But so, yeah, anyway, there you go. I'll, I'll, send, you, I'll, send, you a, I'll send you a PDF, a copy after this is over uh, of, the, of the manual. So you don't have to, you can, you can browse through it. Okay, that's sweet. Yeah, thank you for that. Yeah. Um, what uh, back to the so yeah, no one's seen the dome. What about like ocean tides? 
because uh, oh, how do they there's work? like a heavy correlation with like the moon and the ocean tides, like supposedly. Yeah. Uh, the the moon is just a placeholder. Um, how I treat ocean tides no different than how we build ocean tides into some simulations, which is uh, part of the physics engine. Meaning the last thing we, remember, if the moon is very very small, remember even mainstream science will say that our moon is if if you believe that it's two thousand miles wide is way too big, but for for the size of our world. But if the moon is very, very small, you know, less than 50 miles wide, the last thing you would do is try to create some massive directional gravitational source to control the, the tides from it. You do that below. Again, if we're living in a building, you, you manage the tides from below. And then whatever's happening with the moon, yeah, you can tie it to it visually, but that's it. And then people just make the connection. It's like, oh, it must be the moon that's causing that. Okay, sure, why not? But that's what they're supposed to think. So no, the and by the way, on a side note, why why don't the tides affect the the big lakes? You know, why doesn't the moon affect the big lakes? Why does it only affect the uh, the salty oceans? Don't know. I know because if you were gonna if you were gonna do a, a directional, if you're gonna create it with a physics engine, um, electricity conducts better through salt water it, it, than it does. Um, you can you can actually power a light bulb. You know, run the current through the salt water. It's fun, fun, stupid science facts. Anyway, there you go. Does that kind of answer it? Yeah, yeah, that's all. Yeah. And then uh, another question. Um, the guy that makes those, like, flat Earth model, like, dome pieces, I had a chance, like, he, he asked for ridiculous money, like $6,000 for, like, uh, and I'm, they're so freaking nice, man. Like, oh, are Chris you friends with that guy? Uh, yeah, Chris Pontius out in Texas. In fact, I've got one, two, two. Those are cool, man. Three of them. Like, even if you're not a flat earther, just like it looks like oh, you make quality stuff. It's funny that you would mention that because I I heard, want one of those, man. I heard that the producers, when they were you know looking through all the raw footage, they would spend their lunch hours watching Chris Pontius make models. <laughs> that well, guy's I, sweet. Yeah, they they were like watch they, they it's like apparently they could watch that stuff all day. And it was. I mean, he he did does amazing work, and uh, he hand builds everything. I'm a little surprised that some sort of manufacturing consortium, I don't know, call it Chinese, uh, would jump in, wouldn't jump in and just start, you know, cranking those babies out. You know, the the fifty dollar version of it, but they never did. So I was like, eh, that's fine. But yeah, they're, uh, they're you can just, you can tell those are hand done, like each one. Oh yeah, yeah. There's yeah. Like, and, there's and something the, special about each piece. The I, uh, really expensive ones are the big big ones that, that I turn. see them. I seen them, and it's like, yeah, yeah so. I, w I w wouldn't spend six thousand dollars on it unless <laughs> I had like a ridiculous amount of disposable income. Uh, yeah, but and even then, you'd have to have a place to put it where you know you'd want to showcase it, and you know, you I max out your IRA with six thousand. <laughs> you know, like why would I? But yo, those are sweet, man. Like uh, one day, hopefully, I could get one of those. Yeah. But um. I think that's it, man. I didn't have a lot of questions. I, uh, I was kind of busy with like, um, you know, coaching my kids and then work and uh, yeah, more than anything, I just wanted to talk to you because I think you're such a cool dude. Like oh. uh, if I Thank ever go you. to Whitty, uh, it's Whitby Island? How do you say it? Whit Whitby. Um, it's, it's just just north of Seattle. You can't miss it. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a long, skinny island that, that's right next to Canada. I saw uh, these two kids. They were able to have like a nice, uh, like you were at like some beautiful park with a picnic table, and they got to have a conversation. Like, um, is there yeah. any way you can get me one of those if I ever come down there? What a picnic table? A uh, conversation at a picnic. Oh table. yeah, <laughs> yeah, not like a date or anything. Like, um, uh, I, yeah, I, I yeah, yeah, yeah. If you if you ever come up, by all means, please, please do, please stop by. How did that interview come about? Because it's like all of a sudden they're just like chilling with you at the park, and you guys are talking about flat Earth. Yeah, I, what funny when you're walking through? I mean, yeah, it was an island town, and there's this little park area. And when you're, you kind of stick out. That that it was the timing that was both good and bad. Which was we're walking through town, and you've got a director shooting in front of you, right? You got a film guy shooting in front of you, and then producers walking with you. So what do you think the kids are gonna do? You know, the, the kids are like, oh, it, it's funny. If you have a camera on you, there's obviously something happening. We need to find out what that is. And kids, they're not shy. So they were they were following us around town to where, you know, the producer's like, look, let's just shoot something with them so they'll go away. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. 
I, I felt like they enjoyed the, their conversations. They did. They yeah. did. It was fun. But but again, social media. Again, so the social media street cred means a lot to anyone under a certain age. And so the first questions out of their mouth, which you didn't hear, it's like, you know, what YouTube channel are you on? What YouTube channel are you on? You know, and what, uh, you know, and, and they let the, break out their phones and start looking stuff up and it's like, okay, hey, I ain't got it. The Speaking of like YouTube, like when I went to like, when I was thinking about like interviewing you, I was like, do I do this, man? Cause like this might, you know, I like don't meet your idols. Like, uh, I thought it would like, maybe, like, <laughs> don't, possibly don't, ruin don't, it for yeah, me. don't meet your heroes. Yeah. I want to, yeah, yeah, cause for the last, like, cause when I, uh, started emailing you on like Tuesday or whenever that was for those like three days, I couldn't watch your content. Cause I was like, oh, I'm going to speak with this guy. Like, and I was kind of bored when I was playing video games. I had no one else to listen to. <laughs> so I'm hoping, Thanks. um, yeah. No, I, I'm I'm pretty much what I, look. I'm not an actor, so I'm pretty much what you see is what you get. I don't, you know, I don't put on. You a lived up to the hype, Mark. Let me tell you. Thank you. Thank I you. I try not to be the whole Alex Jones thing where I have to get into character and rah, 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 you know that whole thing. But yeah, hopefully we can do this again, and I'll have uh, more questions for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By all means, if you need any other resources or you need any videos you want me to point you at or anything like that, just let me know. Cool. All right. Hey, thanks again, man. I really appreciate it. All right. Hope you have a good, uh, good rest of your day. You too. All right. Bye.